was you at, boy? That was it, wasn't it? It was too long. So it's one, two, three, four, one, two, three. Yeah, I, 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 yeah. yeah. Tag it. Tag it. Now you're broken all alone. Now I'm broken all alone with only you to thank for breaking my heart and breaking the pain. Well, now I'm broken all alone with only you to thank for breaking my heart and breaking the pain. Y'all need charts. <laughs> just a, that was just a terrible joke on myself. <laughs> oh, you're the only one up there using it. Exactly. Yep. He had to look at a chart to figure that joke out. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Woo. to see you. I hope you're doing well out there and I uh, hope to, uh, we're too bad you didn't get to make it tonight. <laughs> How's she doing? Yeah. Yeah. Fiddle player. Yeah. I reckon. Yeah. Does your guitar sound fine, Jim? <laughs> <Jeff? laughs> This ain't no stinking thing right here. It ain't no stinking thing.
Sure. 
Here we are. I'm here. Hello. Okay, you too. I do. Thank you.
desire? Four or three. Is the, four. is okay. is the eight is me desire to me? Yep. All right, beginning slate. Camera one. Camera two. Camera three. GoPro 2. And GoPro 3. Slate complete.
time. Hello, good to have you with us on Red Barn Radio. I'm Bradford Becker. Tonight we continue in our 21st season of Red Barn Radio when we welcome you to show number 814. Wow. Something. Here with us this evening on Red Barn Radio is Lancaster, Kentucky native and rising country music phenom Alex Miller. Alex's career began at the age of seven with shows in and around his hometown before moving on to larger venues, including the Dolby Theater, Lucas Oil Station Stadium, Renfro Valley, and more. Things changed quickly when one day while working on the family farm, he was asked to come and compete on American Idol, season 19. Alex embraced uh, many of the lessons he learned from superstar coaches on American Idol, and he's continued to work hard to define and fine tune his sound for a larger audience. If Alex's website details are current, he's got tour dates with Chris Jansen, Drake Milligan, Hunter Girl, and Tracy Bird in the works for this summer, and an upcoming EP scheduled for release this fall. Welcome, Alex Miller, to Red Hello, Barn Radio. Here, boy. <laughs> I play no guitar from the nine till a half past one. I'm just trying to make a living watching little body hills have fun. Well, I don't miss much if it happens on a dance hall floor. Mercy, look what just walked through that door. Well, hello, T R O U P L E. Tell me what. Good evening, and welcome to Red Barn Radio. Wherever in the world you're listening, welcome to Roots Music Southern Style. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn Radio's official radio partner, NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. Listen online at WEKU.org. Red Barn Radio is supported by Visit Lex, 
Lexington, Kentucky's Convention and Visitors Bureau. More information on what Lexington has to offer is at visitlex.com. LexArts, Lexington, Kentucky's premier cultural development, advocacy, and fundraising organization, working for the development of a strong and vibrant arts community as a means of enhancing the quality of life in Central Kentucky. Follow Red Barn Radio on Twitter and like us on Facebook. Here's the host of Red Barn Radio to tell us more about tonight's performers. Alex Miller, a native of Lancaster, Kentucky, is our guest tonight. This young and talented artist has a voice you'll not forget, a great sense of humor and a love for pure country music that I think you'll agree is contagious. In a very short time, Alex has rocketed from local venues in small town Kentucky to the Ryman Auditorium to opening for Josh Turner and Hank Jr. We're so glad to catch this cool and uh, fun guy for our Red Barn Radio session. Alex is here with his bandmates, Jeff Watson on lead guitar and vocals, Larry Todd on keyboards and vocals, William Marshall on bass guitar and vocals, Mark Laws on drums, and of course, Alex Miller on lead vocals, guitar, and steel guitar. Steel guitar. All right. We're glad you're here with us for an evening of music and conversation with Alex Miller. Well, right now, thank you, thank you. Right now we're going to do a little song I'd like to say. It's my theme song, and, uh, you know, the only person that can write a theme song for somebody is himself. So this is one that I wrote called Miller Time. And, boys, let's have a little Miller Time here. Well, I fell in. You fell out. Never knew that you had doubts till you went and left my love behind. Now my head got regrets and my heart is such a mess. Well, I guess that means now it's me. Pick a boy.
thank you, thank you. Yeah, we went down to Tulsa about a year ago and got to open for Aaron Watson. And I tell you, I love the folks down in Oklahoma and love the folks here in Kentucky. You know, I was, like, like Bradford said, I was born and raised in Lancaster, Kentucky. That's Garrett County. And so nice to be in Lexington playing for y'all on Red Barn Radio. We're going to do a little song right now that I did whenever I was on American Idol. And uh, this is a funny little song. I wrote this in sixth grade. I was just a wee, wee little fella, but I was learning all about love, I guess you could say. And I wrote this song about my ex-girlfriend. Uh, she left me for a fella and I guess thought I wasn't so bad and come back to me, you know. And uh, I wrote this little song and I told her, I said, I'm over you, so get over me. And that's how this all came about. I even did that at a school talent show. She didn't like that too well and uh, told me that I should never do this song again. But uh, when it comes time for American Idol, I thought I'd get the old girl again. I'm going to get her now. It's called I'm Over You, so get over me. Here, boys, let's go. a little song called I'm Over You. Thank you. A little song called I'm Over You, So Get Over Me. Yeah, she didn't like that too well, but I'm glad you all do out there. Now this song right here, this is another one I wrote, and this is the song that actually brought me to Nashville, Tennessee to do some songwriting. I wrote this with a guy named Jerry Sally, and Jerry wrote songs for Reba McIntyre and a whole bunch of other folks that I know you've heard and heard his music before. And when I came to town, he, he loved this idea that I'd had, and uh, I'm going to play this song for you right now. Uh, but he loved the idea. He loved the, the idea of the song, I guess. And he said he wanted me to come down and just do it and try to write this thing. It was the first co-writer I ever did. And it was with a hit songwriter. And hope y'all enjoy it. It's called Girls Must Be Clumsy Because They're Falling For Me. Well, I know I ain't ugly. <laughs> but I never thought that I Was one girl's considered lord a drop dead gorgeous guy? I'm right here in the middle where Jeff Watson stands, but as of lately, I've been in high demand. Well, I guess girls must be clumsy cause they're falling for me. I know it ain't the money cause I'm broke as I can be. Now, boys, I ain't complaining about my opportunities. But girls must be clumsy cause they're falling for me. Here we go. Well, the Walk away to get 
right. Well, folks, glad to have you with us. We've got some uh, some great musicians up on the stage, Jeff Watson and Larry Todd and William Marshall and Mark Laws, and then center stage, standing there at six foot seven, <laughs> is Mr. Alex Miller yeah. <laughs> from Garrett County, Kentucky. Alex, so good to have you here. Well, it's good to be here. Thank you all so much for having me out here today. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, so let, let's talk about um, let's talk about life pre-American Idol okay. first, and um, I understand you come from a farming family. I do. Did you yes, actually uh, grow I, up on that farm? Yes, I grew up on about a about an 800 acre cattle farm in Lancaster, Kentucky. Now that's a lot of hills, but it, it was about 800 acres. Wow. Yeah, more land than anybody knows what to do with, that's for sure. And uh, d so it was all about cattle and were you involved in any way with that? Did your did your family expect you to do to be part of that? Yes, they they kind of. I think that my granddad especially thought I'd follow in the footsteps of that, uh, especially when I was really young. Uh, my first word was tractor. Mom and dad took a backseat tractor, you know, uh -huh. and uh, I grew up. You know, that's kind of what they thought I would do, and that's kind of falling in the family footsteps. And uh, when I was real young, uh, I really enjoyed music. Um, the first guy I remember listening to was actually Josh Turner, which is kind of crazy. I got to open for him, you know, Long Black Train was one of the first songs I ever learned to sing. And uh, so music kind of was really early on for me. And, of course, I, I sounded like a, a screaming cat or something awful when I first started. I mean, it was Is rough. that really true? It was, it was rough. But, uh, you know, as I got older, the voice kind of matured, and I always kept at it. And I'd sing anywhere they'd let me get up and play, and, uh, you know, nursing homes, school events, anything. And that's, I just kept at it and uh, never thought it'd lead me this far. Starting at age seven. Seven, yeah. Yeah, and... Um, That's when I went pro. Yeah, yeah right, 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 <laughs> right. So your your uh, your grandpa was big. So he passed on the farm to the family, mm -hmm. and your grandpa was big in your life. And he Very and big. he passed uh, a couple of years ago. Is that he right? He did. He passed last year. In fact, we're having to clean the house and sell some of the land off here real soon. But uh, we, uh, I grew up, and you know, he he just I don't know how to describe my granddaddy really to somebody that doesn't understand. He was just my best friend in life, you know. Uh -huh. And uh, he. Uh, he just a, a mentor, and uh, I've learned so much, and there's so much that I uh, that I can pass on to other folks through him and through what I've learned through him. What about uh, his role in your um, learning to appreciate music and, and country music? Was your was your grandpa a big fan of country music? He always said he couldn't play the radio, uh -huh. but uh, he could play the radio pretty well because he uh, <laughs> I, we listened to everything. I used to, whenever we'd go out and work. I would sit there and listen, sit in the truck, you know, or, or out the fence, and he'd have the radio up, and we'd be listening to Bob Wells, Ernest Tubb, Hank Sr., Merle Haggard, George Jones, the real classics, you know, yeah. the old stuff. And that's what we listened to. So I got a good education. He was also a big Grand Ole Opry fan, and so I, I learned so many things. Like, I, I know all, a lot of them old songs. There's a lot of them I can we, – we, they try to get me all the time, the band does, when we're riding down the road, say, well, who done this one? And nine times out of ten, I can, I can rattle it off because I've heard it while I'm working on the farm. Huh. Well, that's a pretty cool education you got from your grandpa. It's more than I probably could have learned in school, and I'll say that. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> what, um, th what else do you feel like you learned growing up on a farm? What kind of education did you get you know, growing up in that environment that you feel you were able to sort of bring to your adult life? I think the main thing I learned was a work ethic. Uh, you know, the, on the farm, there's, there's never one day that's the same. You know, you're always doing something different every day, and it never mm -hmm. fails. I mean, we're always either fixing the fence or mowing hay or something like that. And so I think what you can take away from the farm life or what I've taken away from the farm life is if you work hard enough at something, eventually things will happen for you. Like on the farm, mm -hmm. if you work with cows and you learn how <coughs> cows work and stuff, then you'll eventually get to where you'll know what a good cow is, what a bad cow is, how they'll sell, how they won't sell, which ones are good. And I think... Uh, you can take that and apply that to music because when you hear a good song, you see how it's broke down, you see how it's put together, how it would come off at a show. You know, when you take in music like almost like their cows and songs that is, it's almost the same thing. I mean, there's good songs, there's bad songs, and cows are no different. Yeah, well, that's pretty, that's pretty cool. So uh, that's is. a great lesson to learn as a young person, mm -hmm. right, about process. Yes. Right? Yeah. Amen to that. Yeah, things don't happen immediately. They sure don't. If they did, it'd spoil us all to death. You can't always see the end. No. Um, that's the that's another thing with farming, the big picture. You know, there's every day you're like, why in the world is granddaddy making me do this or why is he doing that? Well, it's because it'll keep cows out. It's always looking ahead. 
and uh, I think uh, the music business, you always got to look ahead. There's, you know, there's always three steps ahead of you. You always be on that third step. Do you remember a time when you were a young person? I'm thinking, um, I'm thinking maybe middle school mm -hmm. or moving into ninth or tenth grade when you started to envision something maybe a little different, uh, maybe get a little bit of lust for something sort of city gritty. I think. Uh, Yes, I, I, I always, you know, I always am going to be proud of where I'm from, but yes, there, there's always other things, and I, that's why I want to go experience so many different things in life, and, you know, getting to travel has been the, the best experience for that, yeah. and yeah. Uh, we've got to go so many places. These guys have, have been great about traveling, and uh, I, didn't, I didn't know how much was out there until I got out there. <laughs> <laughs> were, you, were you already, I'm just kind of curious, I'm sorry I keep going back to your school life, because I, I'm really interested in, yeah. in you as a kid. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm looking at this, at this, you're a tall drink of water and I'm kind of wondering, did, were your basketball coaches chasing you around? I mean, you don't have, you don't have a six foot, you know, a not six too foot many of them plus. around in Geard County, unfortunately for our basketball scores a lot of times, but, uh, <laughs> we, uh, they, they ever tried every way in the world to recruit me, uh, for football, especially cause I'm a big broad guy, you know, but <laughs> My, my grandmother said, you can't go play football. You'll mess up your hands. And I ah. said, your hands will get you farther than that football ever will. And, and you, she was right. And did you buy that? I did. A at the time, I, you didn't time, fight I, it at, at all? At the time, I wasn't exactly happy about it because I kind of wanted to go play, but I, it worked out for me way better than the football ever would have. <laughs> <laughs> well, you got, to, you, you got to your last year of high school, and um, you felt pretty certain at that point that, that college uh, wasn't for you. And yeah. and uh, how did how did that conversation go with your parents? <laughs> well, I, my my <laughs> mother, I, I told her, I said, Mom, I want to do music, and uh, she said, Son, son, you can't. It's just a hard business. Getting, you know, I got the spiel. As a, a musician gets these from their parents most of the time. You music's tough business to get into, and it is. Oh, she wasn't lying about that. Uh, but I hadn't done anything with Idol yet. I was just kind of, well, I want to do this, and my plan was to maybe go to Belmont and go to school and try to pursue music that way. Sure. Get education, maybe <clears> go <throat> teach somewhere or something like that. Was a kind pretty of my common plan. path, right? And Yes, exactly. Right. Trying to think ahead a little bit. And uh, I told her, she said, I just think music's calling me. And she said, well, son, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I saw a thing for open call American Idol auditions, and we're gonna, I'm going to sign you up for that, and if things go well, then I guess it, you're meant to do music, and if not, then you're going to go to college and get a good education. I said, well, okay, and uh, American Idol won. <laughs> and there you go. <laughs> well, this is a good this is a good point for us to move back to some music. Yeah. And then uh, when we revisit, we'll uh, we'll talk about this some more. Sounds good. Hey, Sounds welcome good. back, Alex Miller, folks. Thank you. Now, this song right here is a song that I wrote right after I got off American Idol, and uh, this is a song that means a lot to me because it did real well on the uh, country Billboard charts, and uh, we're gonna do it for you right now. It's called Through With You. Oh, an empty bed's got only him to dream He toes and tire, sleeping with the memory Waking in the morning, it's a clear She's still gone And her goodbye is all I hear I'm through Girl, I'm through
from the pain in the words that hurt the most. Well, I only wish that she was here today. And if she was, she'd get the chance to hear me say. Thank y'all, yeah. That's one of my favorite ones I've ever wrote. And right now we're gonna do a little song all about the, kind of the opposite of that. This is one that I, I like to do because it reminds me of my old car. I had a Buick when I was a kid. That was my first car, was a 2000 Buick. I look like a grandmother riding down the road. And uh, I'm gonna do you a little song right now that reminds me all about that car. It's called White Lightning. Ready, boys? Well, in North Carolina, way back in the hills, lived Tom Crabby, and he had him still. A fruit white line until the sun went down, and then he'd big a jug and he'd pass it around. Mighty, mighty, please, it's fast, it's going to please in. white light. Well, team and G men a revenue or two, searching for. Wide light. Wow. 
Todd Lennon. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Now this next little song we're going to do for you is one that we'd like to send out to all the folks that want to know what's going on all the time. We all know those folks. Always got to ask your business. Be right up in it, you know. We like to say if you send this song out to somebody, then maybe you need to listen to it yourself. It's called Mind Your Own Business. Well, if the wife and I start fussing, brother, that's all right. Being that sweet, a woman got a lot of the bad wife. Well, we've got lots more music and conversation with Alex Miller coming up. I'd like to take a minute first, though, to remind listeners that Red Barn live streams, both tonight's and on any given Wednesday, remain available online for you to view at your convenience. Our live video stream is available on the weku.org website, as is our audio stream, compliments of wgad.net in central New York. 
Don't miss a single episode of our program. And for heaven's sakes, tell your friends what it is that you like about Red Barn Radio, why you keep coming back week after week. Our guest on Red Barn next Wednesday is the Nashville-based Birmingham, Alabama-born quintet, the Banditos. They first burst on the scene with their acclaimed self-titled Bloodshot Records debut in 2015. I know they're going to be rocking the barn with selections from Right On, which is their new genre-defying album. It's released on Egg Hunt Records only months ago. Their story is a fascinating one involving uh, the loss of their bass player, shifting roles in the band, and, and then sitting on recorded material waiting for COVID to end, a story that all too many of our guests have shared with us. Garden and Gun Magazine calls Banditos equal parts alt-country twang and garage rock bang, recalling everything from ZZ Top's Greasy Boogie to the Alabama Shakes' co-ed soul. If we haven't whet your appetite by now, then I guess you'll just have to join us for our live stream of the Banditos next week at 7 p.m. Eastern Time, and you'll find out for yourself. Red Barn Radio, listen to the live. Let's get back to tonight's Red Barn Radio program now. We welcome you live on our social media platforms, broadcasting from the Arts Place Performance Hall here in the grand city of Lexington, Kentucky. Welcome back, Alex Miller. Let's hit her, boys. Well, a beer's on a bar, smoke fills the air. There's a fool in every corner, man, that just don't care. Tight pants, a line that's nets and hats and cowboy boots. Yeah, we need a Friday night, get right, honky tonk, as it suits. Well, a waitress never leaves you with a happy big glass, and every girl's on the dance floor shaking her wheel. It's a two-step, three-step, out-a-step, country. 
we like to we like to say we're a honky tonk, and you know, being Miller, I'm only 19, right? So we like to say we're the non-alcoholic Miller time we got for you here tonight. <laughs> Now, this is one of my favorite songs we've ever recorded, and uh, we got this song, uh, Texas Roadhouse, honored us with putting, making me their artist of their month back a couple years ago. And this is a song they put in all the jukeboxes, and I like to say it's right next to Hank and Lefty, and hope y'all enjoy it. It's called Don't Let the Barn Door Hit You. One, two, a one, two, three. <laughs> heat there I'm glad y'all like that right now we're gonna do a song I'm gonna slow it down a little bit and do one of the a song off my record Miller time and like I said it's the non-alcoholic version so if you want to go out and buy them I doubt it they'll get you very tipsy but if you listen to it it might do all right for you this is one I hope y'all enjoy it's called boys in uniform this is for all our veterans out there tonight <laughs> Stands were full on Friday night, stayed tight along the line. We had to do it one more time, the Wildcats had to win. The marching band began to play, the locker room grew still. We all bowed our heads to pray before we took the field. We were the boys in uniform, knew what we were fighting for. We were strong and we were brave, and ready for anything. With all our hearts and all our might, fast and fearlessly we'd strike, like lightning in a storm. Boys in uniform M16s in our young hands We 
shield our eyes and curse the sands that swirls up as the choppers land and take the sin to war. We know we're not quite bulletproof, so we pray that God will see us through the job we've been trained to do and help us make it home. We were the boys in uniform and knew what we were fighting for. We were strong and we were brave and ready for anything. With all our hearts and all our might, fast and fearlessly we'd strike like a lightning in a storm. We were the boys in uniform And on a clear November day Veterans march in their parade Some can only stand there on the side Salute the flag as it goes by But they remember That we They were the boys in uniform, knew what they were fighting for. They were strong and they were brave, and ready for anything. With all their hearts and all their might, fast and fearlessly they'd strike, like a lightning in a storm. They were the boys in uniform. And they were the boys in uniform. Nice song, Alex. Nice tune. Thank you. Thank yeah, you. that's for all the boys fighting for us there. Yeah, I, and girls, I appreciate them. Well, that's a that's a big deal. Um, if you're just joining us, we're with Alex Miller tonight on Red Barn Radio. He's here with his band. Uh, Alex was invited to be a contestant on American Idol in 2021, um, and uh, now he is m moving on with uh, a, a great start uh, to his career and and. He's going to be successful because he's motivated, he's enthusiastic, and, um, and talented to boot. So as, as you know, if you've been watching. So we're really glad uh, you can be with us, Alex. Um, nice evening of music. And um, I, I thought maybe before we continue on in our conversation between the two of us, you might introduce your uh, player. Speaking oh, of I'd boys in to. uniform, is, they're right by, you've got your own here behind you. Yes, this is fun. So right over here, I'll start on, I'll pick on <laughs> William first. This is William Marshall. Now, William, you tell them, tell them where you're from. I'm from Sadieville, Kentucky. Sadieville, Kentucky. Population probably smaller than Lancaster. <laughs> probably so. Now, this is actually William's first night here with us, so uh, give him a big round of applause. He's All feeling right. in really good, ain't he? Oh, yeah. boy, William. <laughs> nice. <laughs> <laughs> now, back here on the drums, now, this guy here, he uh, he's something else. He's, he's loud. Yeah. And, uh it's Mr. Mark Laws. Now, he's the only one here that ain't from Kentucky, so y'all look over. He's from Tennessee. So, uh, oh. Mr. Mark Laws, give him a nice round of applause from Cumberland Gap. I was actually born in Kentucky. Well, that don't count. I'm a Kentucky boy. You're, you're just a stone. I pull for the I pull What for is the your cats? driver's license say, Mark? <laughs> <laughs> we, we really do appreciate Mark. He uh, is one of the guys from the prison that we went and played. He uh, we, They let him out so he could come play with us. So, Whoa, we really appreciate excellent. Mark coming in. And Thank you, Alex. You're welcome. Wow. Good job, baby. <laughs> No, over here on the keys, he's our oldest member. It's Mr. Larry Todd. <laughs> well, Larry, that's a that's he kind of a from Stanford, Kentucky, and we appreciate him so much. He's really, like, really, Alex? Yes, Larry. You Larry. had to say that. Well, I'm sorry. I can't help it that you are. You didn't tell him you got me out of the nursing home to come up here. <laughs> oh no. But Larry's been playing with me. He's been in gospel music for many, many years, and we're so grateful and glad that Larry's here with us. He's the best keyboard player here tonight. Give him a round of applause. All right. That a boy. <laughs> 
Now, right here is Mr. Jeff Watson. We call him Wild Man because he is. He's something else. But, Jeff, you tell them the groups that you played with. I mean, Jeff was with, tell them. Uh, toured a short stint with Exile in 96 yeah. and 97. Yeah. Jeff is also a, a member of Renfro Valley, and that's how I've got to know a lot of these guys. Uh, most of these guys were down at the historic Renfro Valley. And whenever I was a little boy, I was about 9 or 10 years old, I got to play with all these guys. And when it come time to put a band together, I said, well, who better to call than the guys that made me really, really feel like a star when I was a kid. And uh, it's just always a great night whenever I get to go out and play with these guys because it's just like old times. And, and they're all just great friends. And that's the best part about this band to me is they're all great friends and they all support me in every way. All right. Amen. Excellent. All right. All right. Well, uh, thank you, Alex, for, for doing that. And welcome, guys. And, and great job. We're really enjoying your music. Um, so, Alex, when we left off, uh, your mom had said to you, um, sure, you can skip college, but uh, only if uh, you're, you're up for another challenge. And, sh and she, she signed you up, or, or at least applied, filled out an application, mm -hmm. right, for you to be considered for American Idol. And that was in 2021, so you were just 17. I was a baby. Is that right? <laughs> <Just> <laughs> yes, I was. I was a little bitty. <laughs> But uh, I was 17 at the time and didn't know where life was going to lead me. And, and uh, I'm so thankful and grateful that she did that for me. Well, well, let's let's talk about that. Uh, I mean, we want. I know you've told the story a lot of times. So you know, but but our, I know our audience would love to know well, just yeah. sort of how that all played out. Um, well, yeah, go ahead. It was a wild deal. Um, so I, asked, my mom, like she said, she signed me up for it. So we got. It was right in the middle of COVID. So I had no places to play, and I, I couldn't go anywhere. And so I thought, what no better opportunity than to go and do something? And so I got on these Zoom calls, is what they were. It was a Zoom call kind of thing. And so I got on there, and I did like Folsom Prison Blues, Johnny Cash, and then I did I'm Over You Should Get Over Me, which I did earlier in the program. And uh, they really liked that one. And they said that, well, how would you like to come out to San Diego? And of course I said, no. I mean, no, I about jumped out of my skin to go out there to go play in San Diego. And they flew me out there. I didn't have to pay for nothing, which was awesome. And they, they, they flew me out there for it. And I just went out there and I'd sung like I'm singing here. And they just seemed to like me is all I know. I ain't no other way around it. And um, whenever it, uh, and nothing was fake. Like a lot of people ask me whenever I, I got to sing with Luke Bryan, whenever I was on the show, <laughs> which pff, whoever thought I'd get to do something like that, I sure didn't, but I did. I got to sing with Luke Bryan and a lot of folks have thought that was staged, but I'll tell you, there wasn't no preparation that prepared me for that one. I'm just so thankful he picked a song I knew. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, be real cocky for a minute and speculate a little bit. Mm -hmm. Um, what was it that you think they saw? over that Zoom call that made them say, you know what, we got we to get this, this guy to come out. I think my brother, I know what my, I'm just, I'm trying to think how my brother would answer this about my, me. <laughs> and he would say, yeah, I have too much charm. And so my brother, uh, I would say it's, it's, it's probably my personality and just the way I carry myself. Um, and I don't, I don't like telling, uh, bragging about myself much, but they, my, my, probably my personality, how I, how I talk, how I treat folks is, is generally, I think, why people like me. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's why a lot of people like country music. Amen to that. Right? I mean, it's, it's a why lot a lot of people, people think this yeah. is a put on. Like, I, I guess they think I, you know, I, I ain't who I am, but I mean, I can't fake it. If you go over go to Lancaster, there's people wilder than I am there. I guarantee you that. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, so. It's, it's obviously an honor to be invited to something like this, and, and oh, obviously yeah. some are going to win, and some uh, are not. Right. For those There's who, only one winner. Okay, yeah. For those who don't win, do they, do they uh, tell you why you didn't? No, and, and truthfully, yes, they kind of did. They said I was a little throwback, basically is what they said. And the a reason they throwback. did that, uh, whenever I was in Hollywood Week, I made it all three rounds through it. Um, I, I did Freeborn Man, which is an old uh, a bluegrass song. We might oh, try yeah. to get in this program tonight. Uh -huh. uh, as well as uh, I did I Walk the Line. And then <clears> I did Silver Wings. And they wanted me to do a Shawn Mendes song. Uh -huh. And uh, that's what I said. I said, well, buddy, I've done country all the way through this. I said, make them pop singers do a country song. But uh, <laughs> they, uh, they wanted me to do a, a, a more modern song. And I, I guess I can understand that. wanted to kind of see what I could do. But... The way I looked at it, I'm, country, I'm, I'm a country music singer, and uh, why I turn my back on what's been good to me all these years? And so I did a Silver Wings, and they sent me home on a pair of them, unfortunately. <laughs> but uh, I had a great time, and uh, you yeah. know, there, there was nothing no better that happened to me than being on American Idol, really. And uh, it just it opened the doors. You know, they say in the music business, you try to go through the door, right? 
Well, it, right. it handed me a whole list of keys, and I, I you know, I just got to walk right in. It, it was it opened so many things for me. Well, that's pretty neat. It so was. you mentioned uh, you mentioned you've been working some with Jerry Sally, and he he's a guy, uh, you know, songwriting all star. He worked with Larry Cordell, yes, uh, who also did a program with Red Barn many years ago. Um, tell us about your relationship with Jerry Sally and how that came to be. Jerry's like I call him my Nashville dad because we are really close, and he every time I come down, he always takes care of me and makes sure that I'm I'm doing okay. Basically, keeps me in check. I, I call him my Nashville dad. I mean, we've really become really great friends over the last couple of years, and uh, there's nobody I look up more to than him. I mean, he's forgot more about music than I'll ever understand. Huh. <laughs> oh, we just, we got a little phone ring in there. That's actually sounds like some wind chimes. It does sound like voice. some wind chimes. Yeah. So so <laughs> talk about. Talk about <laughs> talk about how you guys how you guys work together. So what we do is we'll, I'll go down and I'll spend about a week or so and I'll write oh, with wow. him and I'll write with some other folks down there. And usually what I'll do is I'll come in with an idea with Jerry. I'll say, Hey Jerry, I've had this idea. What do you think about us trying to get together and write some? And he'd say, Well, that's I think that's great. So we'll we'll get together and we'll get to writing. And uh, the relationship is just awesome. Jerry's just a just a great guy. And uh, every time I call, he has a day open for me to come down. Oh, I like that. Mm -hmm. Are you the youngest person he works with? There ain't uh, no doubt. Everybody, uh, everybody else has drawn Social Security he works with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, all right. Was your friend. Was what if friend? Jerry's out there listening to this? What, what's wrong with Social, uh, social Security? No. What, no. All right. I don't get it. I, I, yeah, you must feel really slighted here this evening. Um, <laughs> if, you, if you decided you're going to walk out, I Larry's totally hurt. understand. His feelings are hurt. Yeah, well, they should be there. That chick will make you feel a lot better, Larry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, so I guess I'm wondering, as an artist only, um, uh, you know, a couple years out of high school, can you talk about how um, the conversations maybe that you and Jerry have about how your age shapes the lyrical content of your songs? Yes. I mean, for instance, you've got, you know, one of your big songs, Miller Time, beer yes. drinking song. You know, it, it's a very interesting, like, we haven't cut that song, so Jerry is very, very particular about the things I get to record because he doesn't want to offend anybody because we're AM 19, you know, and I understand that because I, I, mean, I don't really partake in drinking or anything, and, uh, you know, I think that is something that uh, culturally is, is, is not acceptable for people under age to be drinking. So uh, we try to be very careful about the songs that we pick, and most of my songs that we've recorded and stuff are, have nothing to do with alcohol or anything. And it's, it's been, it's kind of a, it's a, a blessing and a curse because I'm real young, you know, and I get to play a lot of places that a lot of people don't, but I don't get to play uh, some venues where they serve alcohol because of my age and stuff. So uh, we have to be very touchy about that. But um, and you're, you're also working in a, in a sort of a musical idiom that, um, that is, is driven a lot of times by, you know, the, the, right. <laughs> the whiskey and women at the honky tonk and, and, you know, church five, uh, five hours later. And so that's got to be challenging too, right? It is. It is challenging, but uh, you know, the way I look at it, 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 I I love country music, and you know, country music that's kind of what it's about. And uh, I, I it, it's uh, it's a hard subject because you don't want to make anybody offend anybody or upset anybody. And uh, we just, it is like you said, it's kind of kind of interesting you play a gig on saturday night and then i'll be in church on sunday morning i guess i know i'm in the right place or where i need to be <laughs> uh, <laughs> well i guess when you think about when you, when you think about your your uh content too i was i was looking at your um i was looking at your video the the one uh the one about the south right yes same thing right yes you i mean that that doesn't look like the parties I went to when I was 16 and 17. <laughs> well, that's very true. Um, <laughs> they, uh, we, I'll just let the producer answer that question. He, he wanted to do that, so we said okay. <laughs> all right, all right. But that, so have you, have you gotten good? It looks like you're having a great time. Yeah. And oh, yeah, it, looks it was like awesome a country to music video. Yeah, I ain't going to complain about pretty girls out there in, in short shorts. That ain't, that ain't nothing's going to hurt my feelings. <laughs> but uh, I thought it turned out great. Uh, but it's it's more about the having fun part of it than the the girls in it. You know that's the way I looked at it. Yeah, you know, we're after having fun on the farm, and who who doesn't want to do that? Sure. <laughs> so do you think that do you think that any country music uh, listeners out there, fans out there, would be interested? Like I'm thinking younger people, mm -hmm. would they be interested in a country song in a country song about um, uh, you know from the vantage point of a high school student? 
talking about high school experience and what that's like. I mean, oh, yeah. I guess in some ways, you, you know, you got into some of that with your with your song about the guys in uniform. Right. I mean, there were some, you know, Friday Night Lights sort of feel yeah, yeah, to yeah. that and that sort of thing. We try to do, I try to do a variety and uh, because there's not one aspect, there's not one of it I don't dislike necessarily. I think that all of it has a place. And so I enjoy everything from bluegrass to what they're putting out now, like Chris Stapleton and stuff. And so I like to do stuff. Whenever somebody comes to my show, I want them to go say, well, man, that was a great show. I don't want to say, well, it was a great country show. I want to say it was a great show. So we'll do, we'll do any kind of number in our show. We even do some rock numbers sometimes, you know, depending on the gig. And uh, that's what I'd rather be known for as a great entertainer than uh, anything else. Yeah, well, that was the next question I was going to ask you is, is, you know, what's, what, as you get out and about and, and travel and, and get uh, exposure, what are some of the nicest compliments that, uh, that people offer up for you? The ones that make you say, I think I'm doing the right thing and doing it the right way. To me, the nicest compliment um, and, and, and the most flattered I've ever been was uh, Hank Jr. Uh, he said, just do what you do, son, because that, that's what will make you a star is, you know, being yourself. And I said, you do that perfectly. Hmm. So um, that was that was the biggest compliment I've got for somebody really up top. Um, but things like that, um, something from a fellow musician always uh, like your show is really, really good from somebody like Aaron Watson, who I opened up for. He's a Texas guy. You know, it's things like that. Other new musicians compliment me. That means the most. And folks that have been there and done that. And they say, well, we're going to see you at the CMAs. Or we're going to see you here soon. And uh, that's the biggest compliment I get. And uh, the, the most flattering thing is, is fellow peers saying how much they enjoy me and yeah. enjoy what I'm doing. Well, you're a really talented guy and a really gracious performer. And you're fun to be Try with. To be. You're fun to be with. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, I have no doubt that you'll, you'll move on from here and find exactly what you want, uh, where you want it. Well, I appreciate that. I, I always, uh, my granddad always said onward and upward, and that's, that's what we're trying to do. All right. Hey, welcome back, Alex Miller. We got some more music. One, two, three. There's no doubt he had a real good day. There were blackberries blooming in the red dirt clay. He knew right then we'd love our chicken fried And sweet need to wash it down When God made sound He put grits and gravy in our blood He put the Delta Blues in the Mississippi blood. He put lazy and Sunday so we said a spell And he put a buckle in the Bible
God made the sow. Glad you all like that in there. Now, we, I grew up, like I said, listening to old country music. And I also enjoyed early Elvis, old rockabilly stuff. And this is one that I wrote, one of the first songs with the Nashville 2. It's called She's Breaking My Heart and Breaking the Bank. Here we go. I think I wrote this one about gas prices, boys. You ready? <laughs> When what was mine became all yours, you began to change. Oh, you're breaking my heart and breaking the thing. Breaking my heart wasn't good enough for you, so you had to go and spend all my hard earned money too. Now I'm broken all alone with only you to thank for breaking my heart. This next song is one we're excited to play for you. This is my brand new song, and if you like it, I'm going to encourage you to go over to Spotify and stream it right now. It's called Girl, I Know a Guy, and I want to thank you all so much. Here, boys, let's get her. Tuesday girl's night out 
for a guy. Open all your doors We can tear down all your walls Brick by brick, watch them fall All them know what love feels like Girl, I know a guy Girl, I know a guy Nice song, Alex. Thank you, thank you. Yeah, it's a beauty. Well, there are so many people to thank for our program. First, Alex Miller and his band, our guests on uh, this evening's program. We are ever grateful for our volunteers and staff who make our production happen so beautifully each week. And we want to thank all of you for listening to our webcast and watching us on social media and those listening to us on the network of Red Barn stations and media worldwide. Thanks to WEKU, Red Barn's premier radio partner, Central and Eastern Kentucky's radio news leader. You can listen online at weku.org. It's your chance to hear more great live music from Red Barn Radio and WEKU. That's NPR for Central and Eastern Kentucky. And those of you here in the Central Kentucky area, you gotta be sure to check out Red Barn TV. It's our weekly program of music, now on ABC 36 WTVQ. Red Barn Radio comes to you from our home, the Arts Place Performance Hall in downtown Lexington, Kentucky. Our website has updates and further information on our guests and our program. We're on the web at redbarnradio.com. Now, before we close out tonight's program, let's bring back Alex Miller. Well, thank you. Man, it's been a pleasure being on Red Barn Radio. I want to thank you all so much for tuning in here tonight. The song we're going to do for you is one we'd like to say is our traveling song. We do a lot of traveling all over the country, and we're going to be doing a lot this year. Playing some in Kentucky, so make sure to go check us out over on our uh, social media pages. Right now, we're going to do a little song for all of us. This is our traveling song. It's called The Freeborn Man. I was born in the Southland. Lord, it's been, what's it been? All oh, about 20 some odd years ago. Lord, I ran away for the first time and I was only four years old and a big old man. Yeah, my home was on my
Boys, let's hear. Now when I get to glory, I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'm gonna let the hallelujahs ring. I'm gonna praise my blessed Savior's name. When I get to glory, I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'll help it. Now when I get to glory, I'm gonna sing, sing, sing. I'm gonna let the hallelujahs ring. I'm gonna Miller. Well, that's all for our show for this week, but you can see and hear Red Barn Radio worldwide as we stream live on the web on YouTube, Facebook, and Twitch Wednesdays, 7 p.m. Eastern in North America. You can also listen to archive performances on Patreon, Spotify, and iTunes. And remember this, folks, every like, comment, share, and subscribe, it helps bring Roots Music Southern style to your neck of the woods. And now from all of us here at Red Barn Radio to all of our friends worldwide, keep working together to be safe and healthy. And until next time, good night from Red Barn Radio.